Welcome back to Seeker Strength and welcome back to the Seeker Summary. So obviously a lot of our Seeker Summaries are shoes and today we're doing the Tier L1 Lifter Review. So Tier of course are a very, very popular swim sportswear company. They make a lot of equipment and stuff for swimming. So swimming items and swimming suits. Water sports. Water sports. And today they've brought out their Tier Lifting shoes. So it's been around for a couple of months. And just to be clear, Aaron Horshig of Squat University got them sent over, who has done these in collaboration with Tier. And we're just going to go over them a little bit. So one of the things I just want to get to first, because a lot of times when people do shoe reviews, you're just looking for a certain thing. And it's kind of annoying. The shoe size initially is the same as I wear in Ram 2s. So whatever size you normally wear seems to be the appropriate size to continue wearing. Now, they do start off fight quite tight for the initial weeks but they say that and it does seem to loosen out after about two weeks where it feels a little bit looser at the top yeah i will say i wear a size 10 ram 2 and they're quite tight on me even after a few years and these as a nine and a half are probably too small for me so they are right around that kind of slightly on the tighter side of fitting now let's start off with probably the most interesting feature of the shoe or their their big selling point their usb and one of the most interesting things people want to know about the shoe does that white toe box actually mean something does it make a difference and is it a valuable addition to a shoe and is it worth spending your money on because we know top tier weightlifting shoes are not inexpensive and they cost a pretty penny so you want to make sure if you're getting something it's valuable so i do think that the wider toe box is a prominent feature and it does feel different when you're lifting. So as I mentioned a couple of times when a lot of people asked us uh, before we had the shoe, how did I feel about the wider toe box? Did I think it was necessary? Do I think it will make a big difference to the shoes? And as I always said, I said, I don't know. It's interesting. I like that people are innovating with weightlifting shoes. I like that they're trying to make a meaningful difference. And we know for a fact, at least one other company is attempting to make a wider toe box shoe. Uh, they've reached out to us and we might actually see those shoes at some point. But does it make a difference? And I really do think it makes a difference in the snatch and clean and jerk. And we'll get to maybe something else in a minute and squats and related to that. But when you're lifting in the snatch and clean and jerk, it does feel quite nice. It does feel that you have a stable base. It does feel that you're very, very connected to the ground. I didn't think it would make much of a difference, but it actually is quite noticeable. Now, whether you like that in the fit you're lifting may depend on the lifter itself. But when you're lifting with them, it is an actual feature. So it's not a gimmick in terms of it makes no difference. For example, we saw with the newest legacies that they had the pump apparatus in the upper lip, which didn't actually make any difference to the use of the shoe. So when we're looking at something like this, this kind of unique selling point in the shoe, the wider toe box, does it actually make a difference? And I do think so. It does make a difference. And I would say it's certainly a positive for some lifters. Yeah, I think definitely when you put the shoes on first, just standing there wearing them, I have very wide feet, very splayed out toes, very long toes. And you can definitely feel that toe box when you put them on first. Uh, It is a slightly different feeling. One thing that kind of shocked me was when you look at the sole of the shoe, you can be honest here, this sole from the underside looks like an almost carbon copy of one or two other very prominent weightlifting shoes. And from the bottom, they actually don't look that much wider. But I think the actual room inside there is a hell of a lot wider. Certainly for like this is size nine and a half, it's a wide enough shoe at the top. Now, one of the issues or one of the concerns with the wider shoe was would you be slipping around in the shoe? And they seem to have gotten the grip at the back so hold your foot in place, coupled with the wideness of the toe to be uniform so that you're not slipping forward and backwards. You still have a tight shoe on, but you are able to have that wider foot base. Could they have gone wider still? Now, obviously, that's very difficult to make feet or make shoes wide enough for everybody's feet but i think they probably could have gone a little bit wider still on that toe base if you really wanted to have maximum rotate or explaining of your feet out in the shoe however one of the downsides with this wider toe box and it's not the actual wide toe box that's causing the issue it's that the material here in the front foot and you can see it's very very soft if you get your hands on the shoe you can feel it's very very soft now in the snatch in the clean and the jerk this isn't noticeable but when you're doing heavier squats it's the first thing i noticed where you would actually feel quite soft underfoot and it didn't matter if you left in or out the insole if you took them out or left them in it was a noticeable aspect and it's the first thing fitz actually said when he put on the shoe yeah immediately like as Gareth was saying you can depress that with your finger Mm -hmm. if that was one of the other issues of this kind of ilk the ROM 2s the Antas the Anta 2s 
none of them have that level of play. And like as you're standing there, kind of feeling your way around the shoes when you put them on first, you can drive the ball of your foot down to almost touch the floor. Yeah. And that is one thing. To be honest, I think it could be slightly advantageous during the pull and the snatch Mm -hmm. and the pull and the clean because you have a very sensitive feedback mechanism there for for where you are on the floor or where your weight is on your foot. But for heavier weights, that's definitely a disadvantage. Yeah, so as I say, I didn't notice it at all on the snatch and clean and jerk. But when I walked out heavier squats, when it was 200 kilos plus, like you could actually feel that it was quite soft underfoot, which obviously is something we don't want when we're squatting. So we want maximum stability underfoot and we want force transfer. So it's not ideal for those super heavy squats. We don't want to see that kind of softer compression. Interesting that it wasn't noticeable on snatch or clean and jerks or when you're pulling or when you're standing, but it was only when that kind of heavier loading became apparent. So that is an interesting feature. Would the toe box being wider plus a much more solid underfoot make a difference? And I think that'd probably be the sweet spot there. So... To move on from there, I think one thing they got very, very right here and one thing that's been done very wrong with a lot of the more modern weightlifting shoes is this upper shoe material. So it's a kind of hard, rubberized, plasticky material and it's very, very solid when you push your foot against it. So the common areas of wear you'd see on weightlifting shoes is inside that ball of the foot here. You commonly see that kind of getting worn out or particularly on some of the, the more fly net style shoes. We have a pair of Adidas weightlifting shoes over there. You can actually feel your foot pushing out through that. For some people, it will be on that kind of lateral edge up of the uh, toe box. None of that seems to happen here. That material selection seems to be pretty much bang on. And that follows the whole way around the shoe. So that's another thing I definitely like about these is that homogeneity of uh, material the whole way around. I really like that. I don't think there's much of a need. You'll see it, particularly in some of the Adidas, where they'll have a panel here, then a slightly different material, then another panel. All of those areas are just places where you're going to lose a small bit of tension. Obviously, at heavier weights, that's important. At light weights, it's not so important. So one of the downsides of the material is that the lip or the tongue of the shoe is just a little bit too short. So when you tie your laces, there's not a lot of surface area available for your lace to sit. So it's just slightly too short and it doesn't pull out even with no foot in the shoe. So that is one thing I'd be looking to change in a a later model is pulling that a little bit further out. Now, one other... I'm not going to say downside, but certainly a grey area, because when we're selecting pieces of equipment, we want to select pieces of equipment based on certain principles, and all shoes can be everything to all people. Like when we talked about the Reebok Legacies, we're talking about the heel being very, very high. And if you're a lighter, smaller lifter with a large amount of dorsiflexion and flexibility available for you, that higher heel mightn't be the most advantageous thing for you. So it was a great shoe for me, except for the fact that the heel was just a little bit too high Obviously, given that I have a huge amount of dorsiflexion available to me for unknown reasons, uh, it was just a little bit too high in squats and it was pushing me a little bit too far forward off balance, but could still recognize and appreciate that the Reebok Legacy 2 was a great shoe for someone like Dara. It would be absolutely perfect for squatting. And in the same way, the heel height in these tier is just a little bit too shallow for my personal preference. Not so much in the snatch clean jerk, funnily enough. It feels totally appropriate in there. But again, on squatting, I like just a little bit more than what is given for the shoe. Now, some people, that'll be absolutely perfect for. For other people, it'll be just a bit too shallow. So again, it's a feature of the shoe, and I'm not going to say it's a bad feature, because then that'll be an unfair representation of it, because, again, it's a particular spec, and if you're looking for a particular thing, then this is what you need to go. It's not adjustable in the shoe. So I just want to be clear on that, that for me personally, it's a little bit too low for squatting as well. Uh, I'd like it a little bit more. So there's a nice balance between that kind of amount of dorsiflexion and forward knee travel you get and the amount of kind of uh, uh, balance you get to keep. Because if you go too high, you know, if you're on one of those fucking slant boards that everyone's selling now, you know, you've a a massive three inches of depth that you're going to be too far forward. I think it's worth noting on that point that obviously we see a lot of athletes every year 
we deal with a lot of weightlifters. And people ask us questions about weightlifting shoes quite a lot. Mainly people need slightly higher heels. I think on average, of a law of averages, you'd probably say 80% of people who we'd recommend a shoe change to usually need to go from a slightly lower heel to a slightly higher heel. So they're moving from something like an Adidas uh, or an Adidas 2008. They need to go to something closer to a one inch lift, maybe like a Nike Ram 2. But it is worth noting that for the 20% of people who might have Nike Ram 2s or the Legacies, when they step down, this would be a very, very good option in terms of heel height. It's mm. not super shallow. It's not like some of the newer Adidas ones that are maybe half an inch. This is around that three quarter inch lift uh, kind of area. For people like me who might be dorsically challenged, uh, probably not the option um, or there might be an added challenge. I might need to gain some extra mobility. But for many, many people, this is going to be a good shoe. So overall, the verdict is I do like the shoe and I will give them a bit more of an opportunity to train the snatch clean and jerk as I'll be resetting my training block in a few weeks. And uh, I am, um, I think it's, a, it's once you get to a certain point in the block, it's very important not to be changing equipment a lot as when you're doing heavier lifts, you don't want to be thinking, was that bad or was that slightly worse because of the shoe? Uh, maybe I'm just weird about that, but I am, uh, I want to give them a bit longer, especially in the snatch and clean and jerk. But I do like them. I'm glad that the toe box thing actually feels different because one of the things I was concerned about was, you know, would it actually make a meaningful difference? People have clean and jerked 270 kilos in, uh, you know, ROM 2s, <coughs> um, like Adi Stars and Ironworks and uh, rudimentary shoes have lifted massive weights. And so did we need another feature? Was the feature going to be effective or was it going to be a gimmick? But it is actually a unique feature of the shoe and it's unique enough, I think, that it for the right person would be something that would be a meaningful change for them am i just held by gunpoint by the ram 2s at this stage maybe <laughs> who knows but i do like the shoe and i do think they are quite interesting i think it has to be said as well that stylistically they're a good looking shoe these white ones are white yeah. and gum i think are very stylistically a nice looking shoe i would prefer if it was white and gum and where the gray was was black I think that would be a very, very good look. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think they're good looking shoes. Yes. Yeah. So does that mean you go out and buy them? That's up to you. You know, if you are someone looking to get the next shoe, if there's a lot of shoe fiends out there, is this a shoe to get? It's definitely an option. I think it's definitely something that is a, a viable option. It's not a bad shoe like when we saw with the newest Addy Powers, which was just a plain bad shoe, uh, as the last few Adidas shoes have been. This is one of those, um, and it's certainly a very, very interesting shoe. Now, the retail price, I know, is kind of around there with the Romeo 2s, and they're quite frequently sold out. Uh, so it can be quite hard to get, I believe. Yeah, yeah, which, to be honest, seems to be, with many of our recommendations, seems to be the way it goes. Yeah, so uh, future shoes, what I'd like to see, slightly higher heel, same toe box or even slightly wider, and that harder sole, and I think you'd have a very interesting shoe there. For me personally, I think if you were going to make that extra step and make it Generation 2, besides those changes... An L2, you might say. An L2? Yeah. I would prefer to see uh, slightly different straps. Can I get that so, oh, uh, so I think the issue at the moment with these straps is these straps are, are kind of a carbon copy of what we would have seen on the Antas and the Nike 2s, where we just have this... Uh, rubberized tag on the end of it it's basically just a piece of rubber or a piece of plastic sewn onto the end of the strap they will that will curl by you merely looking at it mm -hmm. uh, and I, it has caused issues especially with the ROM 2s which had the very very long strap I think we've seen some innovations with the new Reeboks in terms of they're not up there I was just pointing at a random Reebok uh, in terms of how they orientate their strap in terms of being able to change the absolute length of the strap without the tag really changing its length at all I think that's a great change I could make to make these slightly better yeah so if you're looking for just a squat only shoe, if you're a powerlifter or strength trainer and you're looking for squats, I probably wouldn't be running to get these just for squatting. If you're a weightlifter, it's definitely a good option out there. And if you're looking for something different. Um, so interesting shoe, tier L1.